scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Some of you have been named like Jabez. That all you've brought to those around you is sorrow. But don't give up. Don't give up. It doesn't take long. In spite of the limitations, I may not know what to do, but I submit myself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. Let's get to the business of tonight. The training may be hard today, but you will thank me tomorrow. Believe me. This is it's not it's not a way that has just been discovered. It's always been there. But the road has been narrow because very few people care to follow it. See, I'm telling you, listen to what I'm saying. It doesn't matter what level you are now. It doesn't matter what is wrong. Just pay attention to God. Give him time and see what he will make out of your life. Hallelujah. Tonight, I'm teaching really more as a life coach, if I would put it that way. I want to talk to us about our lives and our destinies, and I want to challenge us. The focus of my communication tonight is to help us embrace transitions, but then um, my talk is to everybody, but my challenge mostly is to the men this night because you must be successful this year. Say amen. amen. So before we start, all the gentlemen rise. Aside from our elders, prof, please sit down. But every gentleman rise. Don't laugh. Rise. We are not playing games, please. The teaching has started. If you are not sure what you are, stand up. Hallelujah. Say after me, in the name of Jesus, I will be successful. Regardless of where I am now, regardless of what I do not know now, I make up my mind that my world will celebrate me. I refuse to fail. It's a decision that I've made. I refuse to fail. I declare that my family, my sphere of influence, and God will be proud of me. God bless you. Please sit down. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 1. Please, everybody write. Especially the men. Whether you are standing, even if you are sitting on a tree, 
get a piece of paper this night and write. You know, I've told us when you come, especially for those of us who are new, please get a good notebook or something. Um, make sure you are writing. One of the things that we have to come to terms with in life is the dynamic nature of life. Please listen carefully. Pay attention. The dynamic nature of life. Life is in phases and at certain periods in our lives, we are compelled to experience what we call transitions. Everybody say transitions. Um, in, in biology or primary science, they teach about what we call the life cycle of insects, right? It starts from what? Egg, larva. Some of you got zero. You still will get zero today after many years. From egg, some of you are saying adult. How can it be that? And so we see that there are what? Transitions. And at every stage, the rule is different. Hallelujah. At every stage. Now for us humans, there are phases of transitions. You start from a, a baby when you are born down to that early stage of childhood, right? And then you get into teenage. And from teenage, people say young adult. I've, I've told you my position in those things. I don't believe an adult is anybody who is not a child. Whether you are young or old is irrelevant. Adults and from adults, it continues like that. And at the end of your life, you can now look back and see whether you spent your life impacting people or being a liability to humanity. So one of the challenges, watch this. And I truly thank God for giving me this paradigm as a person. And giving us the opportunity to communicate this as a ministry. What I call a balanced growth. My obsession has always been to bring balance to the body of Christ. Right? I attack violently any trace of imbalance in the body of Christ. Maybe it's because of the apostolic office. But I hate an exaggeration of truth. And one dimension of life above and beyond the other. Right? So... I don't want to raise people who are spiritual, tongue-talking people, but are broke failures in life. And on the other hand, I don't want to raise people who will build houses, be mighty people, and go to hellfire. Are you getting me? I don't want a situation where all the brothers are praying in tongues, but every time when you are going to somebody's house to get married, the father looks at you and says, Young man, what is your name? Say, my name is, is Christian. Say, huh? What, what, what difference does that make? What are you here for? You say, I saw a flower. I say, you, a flower. Where? You know? But there are essentials that if we do not address. You see, part of the spirit of leadership, not just being a man of God, leadership is to discern transitions and to bring relevant teachings that build people strategically according to the seasons of their lives. Are you following me now? If I go to a congregation where I'm talking to professionals, there is my approach, my examples, right? And my communications become different. If I'm teaching in a children's class, you can't sit down in a children's class and tell them about relationships and marriage and the rest. You are, you are spoiling those children. You are supposed to be teaching them how to press into God, you know, all of that. And you cannot be talking to, um, say, grand people of 70, 80 years. And you are talking to them and, you know, saying certain things. So, part of leadership, and, and this is the entire scope of what we call in theology homiletics. Not just the art of teaching, but the ability to communicate. Right? We live in a generation where you must make sure that the questions you are trying to answer have been asked. There are many preachers who are, ask, who are answering questions nobody is asking. So, while it is true that we must remain aligned with what the Spirit is doing, we must also be able to transit the body of Christ. The church is an institution, right? An institution is a platform that is able to mold people's mindsets and ideologies. And part of the job of preachers is to be able to help the body of Christ become successful and relevant, even societally. I was saying it in the leaders' meeting, and I said, look, my project this year, among other things, is to 
trust God that as this rain falls, rain cannot fall on a land and you don't see anything growing with time. Is that true? So that rain will fall on us in the name of Jesus. But then just, just prophesying and saying the name of Jesus be successful is a mirage. You've done it for years. Nothing happened. Success is not an impartation. There is nowhere in the Bible where you impart success. You can, you can receive impartation of wisdom. You can impart all of this. But the Bible says they are life to those who find them. Not to those who wish. Praise the Lord. Are we there? 13 verse 11. Not 1, 11. When I was a child. That means when I was at a season of my life called childhood. Are you following me now? Certain things happened in my life at that point. Number one. I did what? My conversations were childish. I spoke like a child. And, and nobody, you don't rebuke a child. If we call one of these our little ones now and comes up and we say, say something and he says, I want sweet. You can't flog him. He's speaking as a child. That is the reality within his age range. And it helps us know that the child is correct. If you call a little child and looks at you and says, where is my wife? Automatically, you know he has been watching nonsense. Either house helps or people have, 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 have raped his mind and transited him to realms that he's not supposed to have gotten there. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So, there are seasons I speak like a child. So, you know a child first by conversation. Second, I understood mindset. I had the mentality of a child. My understanding was childish. some group of um, some of my little children in this place they always come to hug me after service so they wrote me a letter they all came together wrote different letters and gave me and I made a mistake and I carried my big mouth and I said I was going to reply the letter and these children will not let me rest so today I decided to reply the letter and give them after the service if you write me a letter and I don't reply it, you, you as an adult, you can't come and pin me. I tell you, look, my brother, the reality, but these ones don't care. They wrote you a letter and they don't care whether you are traveling to the world and back. If we tell them now, next week, all of you come here. You are going to, we are carrying you to where? A place where we we'll go and play or even Father Christmas or Father February or Father whatever is coming here. They will come dressed and happy. They don't want to know where you get the money from. They don't care. The cost dimension of life does not apply to them. They don't think cost. They only think reality. You told me you will buy me sweet. Whether you are stealing the money, whether the shop is open or not, where is my sweet? You said you are buying me a car. Where is it? Even if he doesn't have food to eat at that point, he believes that a car is coming. So I understood like a child. Right? Number three, I thought like a child. So those things, are, they characterize certain seasons. But then the trouble with many people and especially young people is that we do not realize that life does not remain at the same plane. Whether you are prepared or not, sooner or later transitions begin in our lives. Right? I'll never forget going somewhere and I saw a place that I used to go many years ago. I used to just go there and joke around and play and I said, Jesus Christ, who would have known that that little boy playing around? You see that? See the guys, see some of you touching your face and saying, this is beard. Am I joking? When did he? Welcome to transition. I remember... I remember when I, was, when I was in secondary school, I think it was just one or two. There were these zealous guys that really wanted to start having mustache. They were so, they were excited about it. We had some people who were very hairy and then all of that. But then these guys, you look like an insult. And you see them sit down and everybody trying to make his voice deep. How are you? And all of that. And now, <laughs> you still see people do it, Abby. All these boys, when they say, how far? They just try to make sure that they, they want to force themselves into certain seasons. 
But then you get to those seasons and you are tired and you wish. There are times that you go to Bab and you say, make sure it's um, a nice Barbie in this. And make sure it's the type that will attract the ladies. But now, when you go, you say, are you there? As they are Barbie, they say, what? Just, just keep lowering it. You don't even know what. You don't know what the name of the style you want. Just say, Start start whatever it looks like as you proceed i'll tell you whatever adjustments you make some of you even finish barbing and they say carbs what difference does it make carving transitions are you following me now now whether you like it or not you will come to the end of a phase in your life and demand will be placed to transit to another dimension are you getting what i'm saying this is very, very important. Our inability to understand the laws of transition and the demands that we need to make will produce failures. You can succeed at a season in your life and transit and start failing at once. For instance, you can succeed as a child saying foolish things and going scot-free. And then when you transit and forget you have grown, what you said yesterday and people kept quiet you say it tomorrow and they will slap you is that true because a transition has happened a mistake you made and god kept quiet as if he didn't see it you make it two years later you will pay for it dearly so our ability to understand transitions and the demands they bring is what i want to share very briefly there are five areas that we must focus on to be called successful in our lives never forget these five areas number one is your spiritual life the first area you must focus your spiritual life talks about your relationship with Jesus Christ your relationship with Jesus Christ your passion about the things of God your passion about the house of God, your passion about spiritual activities, your, your, your passion to know God and love him more. A season comes in your life where if you don't pay attention to your spiritual life, it will start messing up your life. Now, look at me. Our generation of young people, we thank God for what God is doing right now, but most of our parents did not focus on spiritual growth. What they focused on was academic or intellectual success. Is that true? So if I have a master's today, even if I'm drinking beer, I'm okay. Right? So if I come and meet this lady, come. I meet her and I say, I want to marry you. And they say, how is the guy? I say, he's nice. Is he working? Yes. Where? He's working with uh, civil defense. I say, wow, this is okay. He's nice, went to school, this and that. He drinks, but eh, just touches it once in a while. And so, once, listen, that does not look like an issue. Every other thing was a very serious issue. Does he drink? Eh, once in a while, smoking. I only saw him smoke once. Ah, but it's okay now. It's better than how many people. And then, we are very happy. That person is called successful because he seems to have something doing. But I'm showing you, sit down, bless you, my dear, that you must focus on spiritual success. It's, it's a non-negotiable index to measure success and growth. Your relationship with Jesus Christ, your understanding of spiritual things. I will never, never in my life give my daughter to anybody who is not born again and filled with the Holy Spirit and serious with God with traceable evidences of transformation traceable traceable you, you, not, you, can't, you can't say you love God and then we can't see the sign God is not a God is not a herbalist you love God, you've worked with Him there must be a traceable evidence number two finance everybody say finance all the men say finance Areas that you must focus on in your life if you mean business with success. I don't care how you pray in tongues, pray to the roof and come down. If you do not pay attention to your finance, 
it may not show now but as transition happens you will see the gravity of your not paying attention to it are you getting what i'm saying wealth finance defines wealth abundance financial freedom very important i was talking to the leaders and i said kai we need to do something about our brothers many of them love god but they are broke is not an insult if we don't do that other people will come and be carrying our ladies because when it's time to marry god has said move forward there is a red sea in front of you right the red sea is and that red sea now is is it's not red sea of demons you have settled those ones you left egypt already you left egypt flawlessly but right now you are standing before a red sea praise the lord if you don't pay attention to your finances you will be a failure in life and i tell you this i give it to you as a guarantee number three family life many people learn family life as they get married when things go wrong he looks at the wife and say what's going on so what's going on we are messing up say really what did you learn about family say i didn't learn anything i only got married and unfortunately, the institutions that are supposed to build and equip people in this area are failing. Either as a result of negligence. I told you that the church is a school. The church is also an institution. Praise the Lord. There are many people who are getting married. They don't even know what they are doing. They don't understand the implication. Is that true? I was talking to some gentlemen and I said, guys, when do you want to get married? All of them said various dates and all of that. And I said, convince me that your home will not be a disaster. They made a lot of very intelligent statements. Okay, Jesus, they've handed over the order, hand over the family to Jesus Christ, which is good. Right? Which is good, but not all. Okay, they'll do something, get a job. Good, but not all. Number three, don't forget that in family life, you are not living with animals. You are living with human beings who have a will. How many of you have roommates that you were praying that last session should end? Christians, you love God. You were so happy when you finished the last exam. The roommate said, I'm finally going. Say, I'm, I'm, I wish you a Merry Christmas. You've started wishing Christmas from 2nd of December. I wish you a Merry Christmas. In other words, get out of my room and my life. All of them. All the doors. Just leave. So if you do not understand the principles of human relations, what convinces you that because you saw a beautiful girl or a beauty or a handsome guy? I like the guy. What of you? What do you think? Whether you like the lady or you like the guy, sooner or later, see, during relationship, a lot happens because it's just two of you. When you get married, relatives come in. Born again or not born again. Are you seeing now? Transition. So many other factors that you are not aware of coming. You get married to the man and all of a sudden, the man is yawning and pouring saliva. And you are saying, my Jesus Christ, my Prince Charming. I turned down 30 guys for this gentleman and what is this? The first shocker. Welcome to the reality of transitions. You may not have the opportunity to see that. Right? So, the, the trouble is not I'm not, I don't have a problem with your success at this level because you have mastered the level. But when you transit, you will not use the old formula for the new level. Are you getting me? So, I want to share with you that you must know how to transit with life. Otherwise, you will be shocked. As a pastor, the way you pastor a church of 12 members, 14 members, is very different. When 50 members come, out of those 50, there's at least four or five wicked people. They have, they've been, your, your, your leadership style must be able to accommodate the mixed multitude that is coming. That means the way you do ministry for 12 people, I love them, I trust them, they are all, they will die for me. 50 people will not die for you, I guarantee you. Right? 
When 100 people come, your leadership style and your understanding must change. When a crowd comes, everything must change. Same thing. When you get a job, as a JJC, they just gave you a job, there is an approach. The moment they promote you, certain things are expected. Right? As a senior staff, there are some things you do that your corporation or whatever will not be able to take from you. Are you getting what I'm saying? When God began to transit Moses in the anointing, it was simple disobedience of striking a rock instead of speaking to it that stopped Moses from entering the promised land. To you, it may look like that, is, that was too hard a punishment, but compared to what standard? Are you getting me? Was it not Aaron and Miriam that said certain things and they were punished severely? Look at Zechariah, right? Zechariah said that this and that and that he insulted Gabriel and they shut his mouth. The same Mary asked questions, how shall these things be? And the angel didn't rebuke her. He took time to explain because he was dealing with people at two different levels. Are you following what I'm saying? Family life. You can make or ruin the future of yourself and the people God will bring under your care. If you do not understand the principles of family life. Number four, very quickly. Your career or your professional life. You must pay attention to it or generally speaking your assignment. You can pray in tongues. You can have a good home. If you're a liability in your workplace, you're a liability in your office, you're a liability in your corporation, they will check you out no matter what kind of tongues you are praying. Are you getting my point? So you must focus on the area of your career the area of your professional life praise the lord and then your assignment generally speaking and the last area is the area of relationships and associations five areas you must pay attention as you transit even in this season what's number one What's number two? What's number three? What's number four? Number five. Listen, if you pay attention to all these areas and you succeed in them, you will become a balanced person. Anointed, wealthy, right? Blessed with the gift of associations. You can impact people. You can live a legacy. This is what God wants for us. And my job is to help us. I don't want an imbalance. Where we are anointed, we are casting out devils. But then we are tied down financially. Or we are succeeding financially, but we are on our way to hell. Right? Or our families and marriages are failing. Listen. Any pastor, any man of God that does not pay attention to these areas will have a chaos in his family. That's why God can never trust certain ministries with certain levels of people. Because we must sustain the ability to balance it. What good is it? Listen to me. If stand up Zoe and Ken. Assuming both of them are husband and wife. Huh? Husband, wife. How will you love a crowd of tongue-talking people who taught themselves in the morning at home? Wife comes wearing glasses because the man really injured her eyes that morning. And they came and you are full of all kinds of people. And you believe that you are rising but there's all kinds of fight happening everywhere. And you say, turn to your neighbor and you find out that people are not turning to their wives. They are turning to some other people. Right? A husband comes, he sits in front, his wife is down there, the children are somewhere there. They form a triangle in the church because they don't want to see any, they don't want to even come near themselves. You are a failed leader. When that happens, bless you, please sit down. Now, for some of us, like I said, some of the things that I'm teaching may not seem to make all the sense for us. Why? Because of the level that we are in life. I will be touching on some things that will challenge you. But the shock is that transitions are instant. That means you must prepare for a phase before you get there. You don't prepare when you get there because transitions are instant. One moment you write your final exam and you wake up to find out you're a graduate. Whether you believe it or not, you are. You dance and rejoice, but then a transition has occurred. 
Praise the Lord. You will be arguing, I want to marry. Oh God, my husband must come. In the name of Jesus Christ, I, I smoke him out of everywhere he is. He must come to me. All kinds of prayers, we apply different skills to, to force breakthroughs into our lives. Now the man comes and before you know it, you have become a wife. And you check and find out that it's six months. You are tired of cooking. Oh God, what is this? You did not brace up for the transition. You were more excited about the motions. You were more excited about living singleness than being a wife. You were more excited about wearing a ring than sustaining a good family. Two months into your wedding, you are tired. That's why you see people slap one another and they are tired. Are you doing no? Are you doing no? Well, let's go. There must be an understanding. And then, there are many Christians, and some of you who work, and I'm, I'm sure our daddy prof here will testify, and many other people. Many Christians fail, fail in their professional lives. Is that true? They are the ones they downsize. They are the ones they sack. They are the ones who are ineffective. They are the ones who are always doing the wrong things. You give them a paper to present, they make a, a, a mess of it because they don't prepare they are waiting for the Holy Ghost to prepare the paper and they come up, she da, 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 da. is it your turn? Yes. And they come and make a mess of nonsense. And then we get angry. One of the worst problems of Africa is the belief that our problems are entirely demonic. It's one of the worst things that has happened to the continent of Africa. An easy explanation to failure. Praise the Lord. So your boss looks at you and queries you. And you say, while he was talking, I saw a spirit behind him. I see what he was saying was a lie. You have been ineffective. They now call you in a board meeting and say, Mr. Man, we have all seen what you have done. We want to promote you, but it doesn't look like you have been effective. Praise the Lord. Very important. How many Christians have given God an opportunity to bless them and increase them? How many Christians are CEOs of multi-million and multi-billion dollar corporations? Very few. Because many Christians embrace an average life and we are happy about it. It's God speaking to us. And we keep talking and say they made an unbeliever the CEO. You will stand side by side with that person and you will not be able to deliver in, in even if the standards were lowered. Praise the Lord. Am I challenging us? How many Christian students pass WAEC? Let's be very sincere. How many Christian students pass JAM? People play around and then two days to the exam, they are just smiling around. How many Christian young people get employed one or two years after graduation? Because the biggest problem with Africa is the transfer of blames to demons. You can't sue demons to court. You can't summon them before a judge. So, we, we do not concentrate on our assignments and on our, our professional lives. How many men of God are able to deliver? They call and say, Lord, bring a crowd. They, they understand nothing about leadership principles. They think all there is is the ability to lay hands. No, sir. No, sir. Organizational skills, zero. Leadership skills, zero. Communication skills, zero. Right? Crisis management skills, zero. And now you want God to give you a crowd. You want to go on air. Is God speaking to us? And then our relationships and associations. People skills. If you fail in these five areas in life, then you are truly a failure. I don't care whether you got first class in school. If your spiritual life is dead and all other areas are dead, I guarantee you life will whip you in a way that you will be shocked. And I want us to be successful. Status is changing. It's no more decline. You're on your way to better death. It's not magical. It's a process. Status is changing. It's no more decline. On my way to better day. Please write very quickly. Why many people are failures or mediocres in life. Write. 
why the reasons reasons why many people especially young people end up being failures and mediocres in life there is a reason there is a reason why many people end up being failures they go to school they give their best they graduate they do everything and then they step out of life with a lot of expectancy just like there are some of us seated here right now we are angry at life because what they told you is not what you are seeing i don't have a job there's nothing happening every lady i go to i want to marry you she say i'm sorry why are you sorry why are you sorry am i dead am i not alive he said you are living but it's like you are dead number one and this is where i want to get our attention now gentlemen pay attention no pinching around be very serious number one is mindsets the first reason why people become failures or mediocres in life is their mindset everybody say mindset lack of mental transition lack of mental transition they are growing older but their minds are not transiting with the new seasons to understand the demands the responsibilities lack of mental transition first corinthians 13 verse 11 said when i was a child spoke like a child understood like a child and he said i thought like a child but then he said something he said now that i am a man what happened he said i lay aside i throw away childish things so many of us have become men and women but we have still embraced the mindset that you had when you were 11 years old is that true so although you are married you are finding out that you are a big child there is a lot of childishness happening in your office you are seeing childishness that inability to transit mentally to match the transition that is happening in your life mindsets and there are three aspects we'll deal with under mindset number one is dependency mentality dependency mentality oh god is speaking to us if you pay attention to what i'm saying the rain will fall on you truly dependency mentality everyone say it one more time dependency mentality because although it is scriptural can i have one gentleman come my brother if this guy is my son watch this if this guy is my son i have a scriptural injunction right as a father to take care of him is that true to take care of him to make sure that he eats well make sure he loves god and all the responsibilities but as the transition begins to occur in his life this child is now becoming an adult is that true that means that there must be a transition but by the time this gentleman is 30 years 25 years and he's still having a dependency mentality that's why we have so many men they are married but their mothers and fathers tell them everything to do because they the transition happened but in their minds they didn't transit are you getting what i'm saying mommy what do i cook for him today he say what did you cook yesterday say say mom say oh yeah try gary today see that so that inability to stand to an extent brothers and sisters there are many people who get married and they create a room for them in their parents house i'm not talking of a large compound with many houses because the man cannot do anything mommy prepares a room for him he now carries his wife later on the wife is pregnant she gives birth and they are all here it's a terrible thing it's a cause are you hearing what i'm saying so dependency mentality they were giving you pocket money maybe five thousand ten thousand per month and now you graduate and five years after graduation you start frowning at your father he doesn't understand why the bad look has happened because he expected that you would have realized they gave you scholarship you were blowing it buying books buying uh, buying boots buying trainers buying everything after all my father he gave birth to me right and now you are finished and your father says um i think you should be 
considering moving. Say, moving to where? Is it not you who is supposed to build a house for me? The Bible says this and that and that and that. Shame on many young people because although they are old, we are quick to look for women but very slow to transit. You see a lady, ah, I like this lady. And where are you? What are your plans? That transition, dependency mentality. Hallelujah. To an extent that you see a young man, some of you are looking at me as I'm talking to you now. You are in this category. You are seated and you get up shamefully, very shamefully. And you call your old parents from their pension and you say, Popsy, yeah. Can you transfer something to me? And he says, okay, things are not going on. I say, it's, it's always like that. You're always, and you cut the call, and you are raking, and your mediocre friends are massaging. You say, calm down. Please calm down. Calm down. You know old people with this, their thing. And your mother is crying on phone at home and say, my son, it's not like I don't love you. What is all that? Eh? It's not even this and that and that and that. I beg Jare, send me some money. And then they go and borrow money. And as old as you are, they send money. You use 10,000 to buy cake and celebrate 30 years. And it doesn't occur to you that there is a transition. Is God speaking to us tonight? Oh, you must grow in the name of Jesus Christ. You may not like me now, but I will come to your homes and you will thank me for it. See, let me tell you. The person who loves you is the person who tells you the truth. It may challenge you, but it will make you a better person. Some of us, we have this over-dependence on everybody. Your father's first responsibility to, is to his wife, not you. To his wife, not you. Hallelujah. To an extent that there are many people who are, I know people who are working but still want their parents to give them money. They are working, collecting salary, 100,000. They collect the salary and keep and say, mommy, how far? Dependency mentality. You become a parasite to everybody. There are people who, everywhere you go, when they see you, you are tired. You call people, they say, well, he's not around. And he's the person you are looking for who is talking. He picks the phone and says, please, John is not around. He said, ah, are you not John? He said, he's not around. He calls the call because there is a parasite mentality. Right? As a young man, you don't, learn, you don't want to learn how to cook and you don't want to be rich. A paradox. You want to go to the restaurant every time and then you want to remain broke. If there's nothing there, learn how to cook. If you can't cook anything, learn rice, beans, swallow. It's a good start. It's a good start. Is God speaking to us, please? Take what I'm saying very seriously. Because if you don't, sooner or later, you will see that it will whip you seriously. I counsel a lot of people. And when couples come, their number one problem is the inability. As I hear them speak, I still see children speaking. Because there is that, it has happened in church. But mentally, there is that dependency mentality. So the man looks at his wife and says, Mommy. She looks at the husband and says, Daddy. And then there is a mommy-daddy fight going on. Because everybody is depending on who. Why didn't you wake me? I need to be at the office by 7.30. Why didn't you wake me? Oh, guy, you are married. Your mother woke you when you were going to JS1. Five o'clock. That old woman will get up and put water for you and do everything and iron your clothes. You are married. To an extent that some of us are pests to our roommates, office mates. You never cook. You don't ever say anything about cooking. Bros, you don't do. Just step into people's rooms. And when they see you coming, they say, lock the door. Lock the door. This parasite is coming. Your life is not supposed to be that way. Hey, hey, look. Hold on, please. I hope as we are laughing, we are listening. Your life is not supposed to be like that. A parasitic life. Everybody runs away from you. Because you have a dependency mentality. You never have the opportunity to manage situations. 
you have headache you are running around expecting everybody to say you you see that and and the ugly part is when it happens for men it makes it's okay if it happens for women but a matured man and another matured man oh boy sorry oh, you have headache what is that praise the lord the guy is not feeling fine who should tell you to get up and go to a clinic it's not like there's no money we are used to dependency mentality mommy where are you come and take me to the hospital you are 30 years dependency mentality so that's what happens when that kind of man gets married his children can be sick and he will look at them like that because he's not used to taking responsibilities dependency no food at home eh? so what no food that's it now they sack a man from work 10 years later he has not gotten another job and he doesn't care you say what happened to me? you know the way nigeria railway corporation that time we we're working railway i was working in nitel i was working in this and he's qualified the cvs are there ah, you hear me this night bless you please mindsets dependency mentality you must get out of it. Do make up your mind not to be a pest and a parasite to anybody. Say, I am a blessing, not a parasite. Say it, I am a blessing, not a parasite. When you were small, when you visit your uncle, once you are going, they, they carry smarties and cornflakes and milk and bone vita. Now you go and meet them. They are old and you see that. You say, Uncle, I'm going. No, he said, May the Lord bless you. I had you. You are a graduate. Now, where did you even serve? I served in Ondo. And immediately you finish. They say, Ah, so they gave you all those 20,000 allowances. Yeah, those things they gave us. And now you finish and you are eyeing your uncle. You are angry because you are expecting him to gather everything and give you. See, I'm not blaming you, I'm challenging it out of you. It does not live by default. You force it to go out. That mentality will never live because you are growing older. I'm telling you, you must make a conscious effort. I made up my mind that the last money I would ever collect from my father was when I was in 100 level. And that was it. I took responsibility over my life. There's no job. Why? In Nigeria now, all this federal government, it's not true. It's not true. What efforts have you made? Dependency mentality. So you see students practice this. You give them assignments, they never do it. Right? They are always waiting for a night to submission. Have you seen people like that? And then they come at me, they say, how far? You know, we are fellow koinonia people. So what? They now bring it, you copy that dependency mentality is the root of malpractice. Because you are in the exam hall and you never believe. Please, let's be sincere. How many WAEC results in Nigeria are genuine? That the people, I'm not condemning. Are you getting my point? How many? I, I never knew they used to do Expo in Jam, but now there's nothing that doesn't happen. All kinds of skills. Expo here, shoes, any kind. You, we have the mindset to be able to innovate ways of cheating. Something is wrong. Hallelujah. Dependency mentality. So, people pair themselves when they are going to write exams. Please come and sit down. If you don't know, I help you. If I don't know, you help me. Question one, you don't know. Two, you don't know. Three, you don't know. The bonus, you don't know. You don't know anything there because a dependency mentality. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are many people who are angry with their parents right now. They may have failed in not being able to leave a possession for you. But let me tell you, if you sit down there, it's the same way your children will be angry with you. And say, did you have to marry? That's what your child will ask you one day. See, was it by force? Then you will flog him. Because that's exactly what happened to you when you asked that question. The second mentality on that mindset is the false comfort that comes with generalizing failure. The second mentality 
on that mindset, we are still talking about one. Let's hurry up. Is the false comfort. False. F-A-L-S-E. The false comfort that comes with generalizing failure. There are many people who become failures in life because they have found a way of generalizing failure. You know, the moment you generalize failure, have you seen people who fail and you ask them why? They say, ah, didn't you hear that there was mass failure? So, they now exit themselves and say, no, it's not unique to me. Oga, you've been earning 200,000. After five years, you don't have a plot of land. Say, are you, are you, are you, you don't know what is happening in Nigeria? There is a mindset that spreads failure so that you nicely come out of it. Are you getting what I'm saying? But you've not paid the school fees of two of your children. You are a worker. You say, you know now, the way this whole thing is, eh? is this just us? It's not happening in your office. We, we generalize. There is a consolation that comes when you tell people, especially Nigerians, that you are not the only one who failed. Is that true? There are many people like that. So a man of God is falling sick recurrently. Instead of him to go back to the world and find out why am I not eating, he says, look, uh, you see, we are humans. So you spread the failure and it excuses your unique wrong. Are you getting what I'm saying? Is, is God speaking to us? So every time you fail, you look for somebody who failed just like you to derive comfort. Rather than settling down to say, no, no, I must have done something wrong. What did I do wrong? What steps can I make to fire back? Praise the Lord. That's the reason why we love witchcraft in Africa. Because it's a general thing. So when they come and say your whole family, now nah, I'm not, of course, you know we pray. Next week is miracle service. Right? There's a place to deal with that. But let me tell you, it's not everything in our lives that is tied to demons. Stop generalizing failure. There is, there is what you can know that will exempt you. Hallelujah. Say, I refuse to generalize failure. My Bible says when men say there is a casting down, what will be your testimony? Yes. See, for as long as you find pleasure in generalizing failure, you will never be great. There are pastors who will never rise to the challenge for their ministry to experience another level. General failure. They say, you know, there's crisis in the north. Yes, it's true that there's crisis in the north. But are you not seeing God doing exploits in the midst of it? You see, when you generalize failure, it makes you comfortable. Because you are now saying that it's not anything wrong that I did. It's, it's, it's something that affected all of us. Are you getting what I'm saying? I learned early in life to take responsibility for my failures. Why didn't you come? Why did you come late to come and decorate this thing? Am I the only one? Did you meet any other person? We all came late. You see, that's it. That's the point. Praise the Lord. Ha, all of you in your family are not married. Yes, we are all like that. You are now happy. In spite of the unique role you play, your role of carelessness and shouting at every man, that has nothing to do with deliverance. Your own lack of understanding of submission, you just rubbed it in the whole picture and said, we are, we, are, we, are all, we are all, there's no marriage coming. It's like that. This is our family, sir. That's why you find out that after prayers, after healing, after deliverance, some people's situation never changes because the factor they've been trying to hide and generalize it is still there. The comfort that comes with generalizing failure. Number three, let me hurry up. The third mindset is an entitlement mentality. Similar to what we call dependency mentality. An entitlement mentality is, is for me, in my opinion, this is the most poisonous of all mentalities because entitlement mentality is the belief that someone owes you something in life someone owes you making your success happen someone owes you making your life are you getting my point 
that that mentality the government owes me right my father is supposed to give me money i'm getting married my father should build a house for me buy a car is my right that that entitlement mentality is a dangerous mentality the belief that someone else is responsible for your well-being the belief that somebody else is entirely responsible for your well-being is an entitlement mentality we blame parents for our failures we blame the government for our failures we blame a lot of external factors every time we are mentioning the things that make us fail we never talk about ourselves we never say our contribution to the equation hallelujah um elijah why did you slap shay i slapped her because she has been playing with my intelligence and this other guy who is supposed to talk didn't talk i'm watching you i'm coming for you you see we never say look i got this wrong i'm not in a good relationship right now i've entered 10 relationships nothing has worked probably there's something there is my outlook about life there is my perspective is ego stinging to come to a point where you accept but that is the point of true liberty are you getting what i'm saying I begged my father for a car to go and greet her father with it. My father refused. My father only gave me the car. Wouldn't I be married by now? An entitlement mentality. I begged my father for jam money. He refused to give me. Though I have not written the jam. Let me fail, but I see if your destiny is in your father's hands. Please hear me, Koinonia. I'm speaking to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You must quit that that entitlement mentality from today some of us have been sending insultive text messages to our loved ones insulting them and say i'm disappointed i asked you for five thousand you cannot even send it mommy this is to let you know i respect you as my mother but i'm, I'm disappointed send you are cursing yourself people return back to their rooms and look at their roommates and they are frowning no cook ah you didn't bring ingredients you didn't bring the food you didn't buy kerosene you didn't wash the plates but there is an entitlement mentality something in you lies to you that the whole world is just about you that's the entitlement mentality pastor jake sabek i feel get something from you he said no what for and you're hungry entitlement that's why you see in many churches there are all kinds of people who wait for people to share testimony. Oh, God gave me three million and somebody is waiting for them immediately after the service. Say, well done, sir. Ah, your testimony really touched me. You see, I hope there are no people who do that kind of thing here. So you are a pest to everybody around you. You are just waiting for people to succeed. And then they pay you like it's a right. Your success depends entirely on you and God. Never forget that. It's God speaking to us. I knew this early in life and it has helped me. That belief that somebody will make you successful is devilish. Grow up tonight and get out of that mindset. Why are you not playing your keyboard very well? And nobody bought keyboard for me now. Who will buy it? Why have you not risen to that dimension? Why have you not started the business? Where will I get the capital? Everybody I meet is not giving me. Who was assigned to give you? You know, the entitlement mentality is an ugly mentality. It makes you believe everything in the world is all about you. You carry your problems and distribute it. You just come. Have you seen people like that? They come and meet you. The guy talking is wearing trainers of 11,000. He's wearing stock jeans of over 6,000. Dressing well and he's saying, um, I just came to meet you, Kai. Food stuff has finished. As if it's what is a, it's a surprise to you. Shouldn't it finish? Are you not using it? 
food stuff was finished and you say um, so how can I help you now you say I need like 30 30 will do me look at he's, he's seeking help from somebody and he's coming with a childish right entitlement mentality there are some of us who and that's the danger the danger there is when somebody starts helping you it almost becomes like a right have you seen people that came to our homes or our families they were trained parents took care of them at a point that entitlement mentality started have you seen people like that terrible thing you see a man and his wife maybe rain washed their house and they came to stay in your house for one month right very soon they start complaining i've been watching the way madame is putting food for her husband ah what did you expect i noticed the way she puts food for my own husband you are squatting in somebody's house entitlement mentality my uncle gave me a job in this company how can i be in this company my uncle is there and i'm not one of the directors my uncle uncle solomon that grew up in our boys quarters i cooked for him so what so what you come late they've put a circular in in your in your reception desk resume work by 6 30 you come by 10 you've done that for three years they didn't empty they didn't promote you your uncle has done everything to lift you and you are not cooperating yet entitlement mentality how many people have we hated innocently in life how many of our parents have we called witches and wizards because of entitlement mentality to an extent some of us can go somewhere and buy clothes and say they should go and meet your mother to collect the money or your father or your brother i refuse that mentality i refuse it i refuse it i refuse it in the name of jesus christ is god speaking to us some of these things i'm saying when it applies to you and it shoots at you like an arrow just let it enter you because it will it will refine you and it will make you as gold Ladies and gentlemen, let me announce to you again that transition is here. Embrace it. Whether you like it or not. While I sat down, I think it was um, whether January or so, miracle service. And they were the celebrants. If your birthday is January, come out. And I saw a lot of people smiling. And I said, transition. Transition. Praise the Lord. Whether you are prepared or not, transition is here. Praise the Lord. My, my sister did something that touched me today. In the afternoon, while I was just meditating, I got an email from my sister. And she sent me, I, I still want to do it. I've been trying to do that on my phone. But it's, I wanted to show all of you, I wanted us to project it here. Our old six massacre 2009 crusade crusade photo i really would love us to have that i think we can walk i have it in my email eh? get me a laptop with internet and i'll transfer it yes i want you to see it one day we'll come up we have the video i think we have the video of our 2007 crusade you will see all of us there you see victor the head of department of protocol they all held firewood on their head hey, oh. that's what the song they were singing and jumping Hey, why you see us so lean looking like like whatever transitions but here we are today 10 years after now we will look back you will see the pictures of today and you will smile you will tell your daughter that was me say are you hearing that was me i was serving the lord all my life so don't think is this lie that most of our parents lied to us they said they were su president they were the best footballer in their school they were best everything our own has proof you can see it and you can know praise the lord one last mentality mediocre mentality mediocre mentality mediocre mentality 
We're still talking about the reasons why people become failures and mediocres. And I'm, I've just touched on number one, medio mentalities, mindsets, really. Mediocre mentality. What is a mediocre mentality? It's the mindset that tells you impact, influence is carnal. It's a mindset that is satisfied with being small, being quiet. The mindset of an average life. The belief, the fallacy that an average life is the greatest way to make heaven. It's a mediocre mentality. That mindset of being small. Have you had people like that? Me, yeah, all I want, God, just give me one small golf, one, two house, anywhere, whether in the bush or wherever, I'm grateful. Let me just have my two children. If we can eat food in the morning, even if it's once a day, God be praised. It's a mediocre mentality. No matter how spiritual you try to make it. There are churches like that. We are happy. We are a simple, nice family church. We are happy this guy has been there for the past 10 years. We are there. We are not doing anything. We are not letting anybody know what God we are happy. We are okay like that. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up and they will break every chain break every chain break every chain break every chain kingdom advancement kingdom advancement is tied to one word influence one word influence Without influence, there is no kingdom advancement. I want you to know that. When the church is quiet in a society, there is no influence and there is no advancement. The church in Nigeria is not quiet at all. That's why we are involved in everything in this country. The church, Nigeria is the most religious country in the whole world. And forget about the errors here and there. I tell you, the church in Nigeria is alive. We have a say in everything from the executive government. Everybody knows in Nigeria that you don't downplay the church and go scot free. Influence. I've studied revivals, I've studied um, technological revivals. It was all tied to the church. Are you getting what I'm saying? We need men and women of influence. Get my teaching, Conquering Cosmos. There I teach on what we call strategic apostolic invasion. It's not just sharing tracts. Influence. What is wrong if Koinonia has 10 bank managers as, as your members? You imagine that. We call that influence. Where one person represents a nation. Influence. Influence. Are you getting what I'm saying? Please don't ever reject influence in your life because God wants to give it to you. It was through influence Jesus was able to advance the kingdom. The Bible says it was noised abroad that that celebrity was in town and he had the opportunity to teach and to heal and to deliver. It says in, in Matthew chapter 5, it says you are the salt of the earth. You add value. You give meaning to the earth. You are not just a tongue talker. He calls you the salt of the earth. He calls you the light of the world. And he says you are a city. Not like a city. Not a village. You are a city. Hallelujah. I refuse to be small in my life. Nobody will preach me into being small. I rejected it long ago. I still reject it. Koinonia will not be small souls are saved because of the influence destinies are changed because of the influence during the retreat media people told us the targets that they want on facebook and the rest and i told them go for it we are going all the way for it let me tell you this is not a small ministry we are visionary people and we refuse to be small and you will never be part of this vision and be small i will challenge you i will challenge you 
thank God for where you are, but we will not allow you to remain there. You must rise because there is coming a renaissance. There will be an emergence of people in every area. Hallelujah. It was a mirage in Nigeria if one person owned a television station. Is that true? Television station. I remember that time you own a television station, they tell you every kind of thing. And God said, come on. Where are those apostles? And men and women started rising. 2005, the Lord revealed to me that there will be 37 Christian stations in Nigeria. And today, how many lives have been blessed through the power of the media? Are you getting what I'm saying? All the technological gurus and the rest. Imagine you making a, a laptop that the, it must not mention Jesus. But imagine that you put it on and, and the sound for it to start is a deep worship song. Whether you like it or not, you must buy it. Hallelujah. Praise God. You must make your presence known. It's the, it's the, it's, it's the principle of dominion. Part of dominion is to make your presence known in a territory. Then they will adopt your ideologies. Then they will embrace your convictions. If there are, if there are hundred millionaires, I'm not talking of one million, real millionaires in this place, I guarantee you, your spheres of influence will. I, something happened, I think, um, I went, one of our ladies here, she's, She's technically my account officer with one of the banks. And, um, and uh, we're going, she had been forcing me to come and collect my card. My card had expired. And she was forcing me to come and collect the card. She said I should get back into banking with them and all of that. And then eventually I went. She had prepared everything. When I got there, she was greeting me. Her superior was just looking at me. Who is this guy? And before I know it, I saw one Koinonia member coming again. And then one other lady coming to greet. I said, that's right. This is the kind of testimony we want to be seeing. When they came and they were greeting, ah, the man squared up and said, oh, well done, sir. I told him, I said, this, this lady is the one who is forcing me to come to this bank. Look at her. See that? What does that mean? Promote her and lift her because she's doing a good job. The influence of the kingdom. I don't know who taught you that mediocrity brings glory to God. I want you to know that the more you have results, the more your words become powerful. Results add weight to your words. Results add Refuse a mediocre mentality. Refuse it. Hallelujah. Refuse it. Pastor Jakes in his place of work, within a short time, when he was announcing his, his promotion and his lifting, I smiled. I said, those guys, those guys, come on now. Physical competence, the anointing, wisdom, grace, everything combined, you can't be small. Shout it, I refuse to be small. Say it, I refuse to be small. Please, I'm challenging you. Thank God for the photocopying business, but don't die there. Start small, but I'd like you to see beyond. Who is God speaking to? I'd like you to see beyond. Refuse to be small. The influence of the kingdom is the key to strategic apostolic invasion. Michael Jackson is long dead, but last year alone, his album made 150 million US dollars. In fact, when he died, Three days after his death, they made $120 million at his death. The man who feeds you is the one you will listen to. Is that not true? For as long as the world system keeps feeding us, we will be forced to listen to them. But I tell you, there is an army. Ha! There's an army rising up this is why we are teaching these teachings there's an army rising up there's an army rising up they will break every chain break every chain break every chain 
Break every chain. Break every chain. One more time. There's an army, there's an army rising. Things will not continue to be this way, I tell you. There's an army rising up to break every chain. Break every chain. It is not the will of God for you to be small. It does not glorify God in any way when you are small. John 15, I think from verse 8, when you read down, it says, Herein is our Father glorified when ye bear much fruit. Much fruit, not little fruit. Much fruit. much fruit. Look, I'm not talking of some carnal fleshly wanting to make it in life. I'm talking of lifting with an assignment. Influence that is intentional as a means to an end. It makes your words powerful. You are able to speak. Hallelujah. That's why we must speak into your life. Oh, you will get the oil company job. That devil will not stop you. The, the, no, there are the principles. You will get it. You will be wealthy. You will be blessed. The devil will be alive to see it. I will never raise a poor congregation. Never raise a weak congregation. A weak congregation produces a weak man of God. A weak ministry that has no voice. I will never let anybody watch me on TV and scroll and say, next, this useless man, part of the noisemakers. No. That when you listen, you say, this is it. I had one word and it changed me. You must embrace the influence of the kingdom. I don't know what you have been taught, but you must change your mind. We have small parents, innocent but small, small families, small everything. Small. I got my small degree. I read my thing. I don't even want anything. Let me just get. I got one teaching in one LEA school. I'm okay. 7,000 is enough. What am I looking for in this life? Stop that. Stop that kind of devilish thinking. Remember, let me always balance this. I'm not talking of this carnal, lustful affinity for the things of the world. I'm talking of gaining kingdom influence with the exact intention. Right? The exact intention to bring the glory and the kingdom of God. There was a time Jesus came in the city and he stole the show from all the scribes and Pharisees. The guys were angry. They said they are not listening to us again. Ah, uh -uh, what happened? Look, let me tell you, Koinonia, we are a city. We are a city. You are not a village. You are not small. I separate you from that small mindset. You may be in a small room now. Think big. You may be in a small hut now. No problem. Soak the gari, but see the world. There is much to do for the kingdom. God has increased and expanded our influence through the teachings and through the meetings that we've got. And we have seen more souls. Look at the gentleman. Where is that guy that came that shared his testimony? Oh, he's outside. Oh, look at That's the gentleman. All the way. We call it kingdom influence. How many people claim they saw Jesus and he said the words he gave them, he said they should take it out of the earth. But they are poor and broke. It has not come out. Not even everybody in the city knows. And it's not that they had a wrong encounter. Hallelujah. Influence. Influence. You must embrace it in the name of Jesus. Say, I refuse to be small. Say it, I refuse to be small. Challenge yourself, I refuse to be small. The second reason why young people become failures. My spirit is fired up. We are going to pray. The second reason, I told you the first is the mindset. Second reason is laziness. 
Laziness. You're my treasure, my priority. Who can compare to you? Great is the match of your royalty. Oh, morning star, you true. So laziness, everybody say laziness. The second reason why people become failures in life is laziness. There is this spirit of laziness that is upon many Nigerians, upon many young people, an inertia, a reluctance to move forward, inactivity, satisfied with their levels, closely tied to laziness, is the spirit of procrastination. I will do it another day. Oh, I will do it. Is it not savings? I will save the money. Is it? I will do it. I will do it. Procrastination is a dangerous spirit. Pray for your destiny. I will pray. Settle down. Begin to study in the unique area God has called you. Man of God, study about church growth. I will study one day until all your members leave. And then you start getting angry at everybody. All these people, are you sure they didn't touch their hand? Go and touch it too, if it's available like that. Hallelujah. Laziness. There are many lazy people in Nigeria. And the Bible talks a lot about laziness. The Bible talks about laziness. The moment you are lazy, get set to beg. You have signed an agreement with begging no matter who you are and i have found something with lazy people hate begging they hate begging they feel embarrassed don't worry just bring it bring it bring it i'll do it fast lazy people hate begging hallelujah Sorry for the little distraction. Let's pray. Pray in tongues while I do this. Is that alright? Alright, so go ahead and pray. Pray in tongues very quickly so that it will sink. It will sink down. Your word is producing results in my life. Hallelujah. Laziness. There are many of us who are lazy. Look at me. When it is time to sit down, you sit down. But if it is time to get up and act, huh? when there is an anointing for something, you stand up and act. 
there are many people that if you took action when God spoke to you, you would have built the house by now. There are many people, if you took action, you would have gotten that job. Action, laziness. I would do it. No. Unfortunately, time does not wait for everybody. And if you want to wait until everything is right, you will never move in your life. The Bible says, he that considers the weather will never sow and as a result will never reap. Hallelujah. Laziness. Inaction. Procrastination. That inertia. Refusal to move forward. You are sitting in your room. Somebody just sows a thousand naira and the Lord says, get up and go to Jordan bookstore. I gave you that money because there is a book I want you to buy. He said, no problem. You sit with that money immediately. You sit before you know it. You have spent 200 naira from it. See that? Before you know it, you finish the money. You just sit down there. Let me tell you one way the devil kills people. Sleep. I know God gives sleep, but Satan can also give sleep. Sleep. This sleep. It looks little. I was teaching the school of ministry students and I told them, if you sleep eight hours a day when you are 30 years, you've slept for how long? You've slept for 10 years of your life. Exactly. By the time you are 30 years, just know that you are in reality 20 years because the whole 10 years went into sleeping. You sleep from 8 o'clock. You wake up. Round one waking is around four. You just wake up and check if there's any Nigerian film around. When there is none, you lie down. You wake up around nine. That's the second phase of, of the waking up. It's not like you sleep marathon. You wake up, just browse around, and then maybe you plug water for bathing and get back to sleep. Before you know it is one o'clock, you just yawn and stand up. And you sit down, you are lazy. You, like, ah, sleep. you will be poor. Guaranteed. Please, brothers and sisters, hear me. Love not sleep too much. It will rob you of the anointing. I, I don't know any man who carries true anointing who loves sleep. No. No, sir. No, sir. I've been awake today since at about... I think maybe 2.30 or 3. God is my witness. I've been awake. And as I go back now, it's not like I'm going to go and jump on my bed and start sleeping. No. What is your concept of success? Look, success is not cheap. It's not for children. T.D. Jakes wrote a book, Can You Stand to Be Blessed? It takes stamina to be distinguished. So for those of us who think the anointing comes and you just lie down and sleep and snore away your life and wake up and find yourself successful, you are joking. Wake up. Sleep. Huh? You lie down and sleep. It brings a lot of things. Forgetfulness. You are 30 years. You forget about everything. Somebody says, I'm coming. He comes and he says, why are you here? He says, I said, I'm coming. He says, oh, I remember. He says, but you are too young for that unnecessary sleep when the night time when you should wake up and study and pray some of us people can be gisting they can even lie down your bed and wake up you didn't know that anybody lay down there because you sleep and and the sleep is so deep you wake up and you are frowning ah why did you wake me it's a bad attitude I know you won't like me. I will still say it. I love you too much to leave you that way. Especially for the gentleman. Please love not sleep. If you find yourself sleeping around, just, just imagine money disappearing from your life. One. Two. Anointing disappearing from your life. Wake up. Don't you know there is the mystery of the night time? Look at the prophets in the Bible. Look at men. Look, Job said, um, I mean, the psalmist said in the night time, during his time of meditation, when things are revealed to him, the night time is when great men get insights. It's the time where men of power travel in the spirit. Okay, it's, it's, it's true that you are tired. At least three, four or so. Wake up. Don't let your body cheat you. You need to drag it and say, no way. I refuse to let my flesh make me a failure in life.
is God speaking to? There are certain people, even five o'clock waking up in the morning, that families used to do, you know that thing they do, five o'clock. You wake up, you carry your Bible, drop on your bed and sleep on it. Somebody will come and see you and think you are on, on, on that deep med. Who are you cheating? Who are you lying to? When you see somebody, please, don't play that kind of expensive game with your destiny. I'm not telling you not to sleep. There are times I take out time to rest. But brothers and sisters, if you must be great, there is a price. Please hear me, Koinonia. There is a price. Hallelujah. So laziness, we must walk on it. Laziness. Kill procrastination from your life. There are some things God has told you people to do. God told you to sow a seed. I will do it tomorrow. God told you to get up and read on leadership. I will do it tomorrow. Do it now. Do it immediately. Number three, fear. The reason why many people become failures and become mediocre in life. Fear. Fear. Fear of failure. Fear of being embarrassed. Not just failure, but fear of repeated failure. It's true that failure is embarrassing. It's true that failure is lashing, is ego stinging. But it is in your failure that you find the door to true victory. Please hear what I'm saying and take it seriously. Fear of being seen as a failure. Is that not what is responsible for our fake lives? Right? You go and borrow a shoe of 20,000 naira. And you wear and say, this shoe, 20,000 naira. Is it your own? No. Because you don't want to fail. People borrow phones. I beg, I just want to stroll to Ribadu. Can you help me with your phone? What for? You borrow watch, borrow clothes, borrow phone, borrow everything, borrow mindset, borrow everything. And in the end of it, you find out that there is no authentic life. I've told us again and again in Koinonia, stop trying to look successful. Pay the price and be successful. Pay the price. That's why we don't discriminate anybody here. I don't want to know who you are or who your father is in terms of maybe preference and all of that. I treat everybody with honor and dignity because I believe everybody can be everything if you get the word. Hallelujah. Fear of failure. Look at me. Why didn't you start the business? Failure made you to give a lot of excuses. Why didn't you go and apply for the job? have not served. Do they take people who have not served? Did you go? Did you go? You see, ba, look at me. Many of us write a lot of prayer requests. Next week now, there will be another one. I, I, you know I kneel down to pray and I see it. Some of you is full scab. You write it and then you write, uh, please turn over. That means it has not finished. Oh, there's still some more. But the issue is that do you really believe that as the anointing comes on it, you will need to take action? You see why I've been teaching us on faith. Faith in one word is obedience. Action. I refuse fear. Is it because people will talk about you? Fail and see whether people won't talk about you. What you are running away from will come. Whether through the door of success or failure, it will still come. The greatest way to reply critics is massive success. Continue your results. Let the result keep speaking. You wrote jam. You didn't pass. So what? Why don't you write again? Are you hearing what I'm saying, please? Fear. Nigerians can fear. And many of us, that fear makes us to give ourselves excuses. I'm young. Please, there's time for everything. When is the time? I'm young. He told Jeremiah, do not say I am a child. Don't say I'm a child. Say I'm a child. Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett, the, the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway. One of the top three wealthiest people in the world. He was asked a question that um, was the greatest mistake he made in his life. And he said he started investing at a um, very late. What is the late? Eight years old.
eight years old. Sila. Think about what I just said. There are people to start training and building their children. They say it's too small. Do you know there are some of you, if you talk to your parents about finances as you are now, they'll say, what are you, what are you talking about it for? It's, it's an innocent mindset, but it's poisonous. So they tell you, don't worry. Ah, why, why are you rushing? And then before you know it, you now have to face life by yourself and you make a lot of blunders. Say, I refuse fear. Say it, I refuse fear. There are two kinds of fear. Fear of trying and fear that comes as a result of the memory of your past failure. Some people have refused to get into relationships. The last one didn't work. Who said all would not work? You have made adjustments. I remember I went to minister somewhere and I gave a woman a word. I told her, I said, Madam, um, I see that something happened in your home, but I'm seeing you marrying again. Ah! No, please, oh, my children, it's okay. I said, ah, madam, what's the issue? I'm just telling you what God is telling me. That a man is going to come, ask your hand in marriage, and you'll be gloriously said, say, me, marry a man. Me, men, look at my children, me. Men. The woman was saying, I said, madam, I'm a man, oh, please. This one that you are talking about, men, I see, it's not every man that, everybody, blah, 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 blah. The woman started crying. I said, madam, God is bringing a good, okay, you know how women talk, okay, well, let's see fear fear that's what has stopped some of us from being champion you are used to failing the day you succeeded and they told you you succeeded it's a lie don't play games with me don't you know that the divine life part of the blessings of the divine life is a life of success no matter how you have failed in life hear me i want you to believe that you can come back alive are you hearing me say i refuse to fear Say it, I refuse to win. See, there is a, there is an, let me, let me use this slang. There is an, I don't send mentality. You have to give life and give people if you want to make it. Some of us are too careful. What will, what will Zuerar say now? What will mom, we are too careful. That, that, that excessive care is not, is not care unto faith. It's care unto doubt and it will kill you. There are people today who have refused to learn how to drive because of fear. What if I capsize in a gutter? You have refused to learn. There are others who have refused to learn how to do a lot of things. God gave you opportunity to learn so many things. There's tailoring now, professional tailoring. Somebody from UK just came and said, I want to train you. Said, Guy, me, please. I don't want any insult. I've seen the way they insulted my madam. I, I, I don't want headache. You are ready to fail. If you think like that, you are going to fail. In the name of Jesus, I release upon you the spirit of courage. Courage. You have to face life with courage. Brothers and sisters, wake up. Stop giving excuses. And tell yourself, I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear. It is a risk to do everything in life. The only guarantee you have is the word of God. Get up and in the name of Jesus, take steps. Refuse to fear. Koinone, I'm preaching to you. Refuse to fear. Refuse to fear. Refuse it. I know you carried over the course. Go back again with courage. Fear has kept a lot of people now. The Bible says, and to deliver them who through fear of death have all their lifetime be subject to bondage. To pray for a sick person, fear. You're already stretching your hands. You are looking and say, ah, I'm only in welfare department. Well, let me not disgrace myself here. Fear. Lastly, one of the biggest reasons why many people become failures. Ignorance of kingdom principles that guarantee a life of success and impact ignorance of kingdom principles ignorance this is in my opinion the biggest reason ignorance of kingdom principles that guarantee a life of success and impact joshua chapter 1 verse 8 it says this book of the law 
shall not depart from out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate during day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written you cannot observe what you do not know he said then not before not during then shall thou make thy ways prosperous and you shall have not any kind of success good success ignorance look at me i know we know that by now in koinonia that there are laws in the kingdom prosperity is not magic it's not a wish there are kingdom principles a life of influence you want to be a career of the glory and the power of god it's not a wish there are pathways to it you want to carry honor upon your life you can be blessed it doesn't mean you are honorable it says and jabez was more honorable honor is a law in the spirit there is what brings honor you can be rich and not have honor you can be anointed and not have honor when honor comes on your life everybody knows that there is honor upon your life hallelujah longevity has a principle longevity influence has a principle and he said in matthew chapter 13 now i think verse 11 or so if i'm not mistaken he said it has been given unto you say it has been given unto me one more time it has been given unto me to know the mysteries of the kingdom everybody say the mysteries of the kingdom it is on the strength of those mysteries that you will enjoy dominion it is on the strength of those mysteries that you will do great and mighty things in life nobody will just come and bless you for nothing when during our series the mysteries of the kingdom i teach on the law of exchange and i told you nothing goes for nothing nothing goes for nothing there is an exchange that must happen deeper 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 it's calling you deeper 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 it's calling you deeper Where is God? MOG. Where is God in your ministry? Somewhere behind. While ministry programs and conferences and conventions have taken its place. Businessman and woman, where is God in the equation of your life? Prospective husband and wife, where is God in the equation of your life? Students, where did you keep God? This is Chem 3 1 something. Sociology something something. This and that, and Jesus Christ is somewhere roaming around. Needed like a herbalist when the going is tough. And then you return him back. Tonight, may an addiction for the things of God come upon your life. Please listen to me. This is the realm that when you walk in, no power in existence can prevail over you. Challenges are okay. Defeat is unusual for a Christian. Hallelujah. Many of us have come here tonight because you are hungry. Some of us have come because we are at the end of our road. Someone just invited you and said you have tried everywhere. You've gone to Zaria City. You've done everything. Why don't you just come to God? And you dragged yourself here and said, well, Lord, let's see what happens. I tell you, you are in for a shock tonight. God will beat you above and beyond your expectation. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Bless you guys. Rise up on your feet, everybody. We are going to pray. Just two prayer points. And then we'll worship. Lift your hands and lift your voice and begin to prophesy. Take everything, oh God. Come on, pray now, everybody. 
take everything take everything my life belongs to you take the talent oh God take the talent take the gift take everything pray from the depths of your heart and say Lord in any way in any way I have allowed other things to take your place in my life tonight I repent I repent oh God I repent oh God I repent oh God pray from the depths of your heart many of us have never given our hearts to the Lord you've gone to church you have a Christian name but you've never given your heart to the Lord it's not enough to see power it's not enough to see miracles hallelujah I'm going to make a very serious altar call right now. I don't want you to sit down thinking about it because I know there are people. There are people here tonight, inside and outside. Probably you followed someone and you came. Probably you are struggling with a sickness or a terminal disease. The doctor has given you the letter and said you have a few months to live. It all starts with Jesus tonight hallelujah there are two sets of people i'm going to call and they will all come at once those who have never made a decision don't deceive yourself tonight i don't care whether you're a pastor whether you're a pope you've never given your heart to jesus to say lord i, I surrender my life truly and then there's the second category those who are saying, Lord, I'm tired of lying to myself. I know that this thing I'm doing is not Christianity. I need a fresh start. People have told me it's all right. I want to make my way right. Yes, you have come out once. You even prayed for. You even fell down under the anointing. But you are saying, Lord, I'm rededicating my life tonight. Those two categories of people, as I... As I count one to ten, I like you to run like you are running away from fire right now, inside and outside. One, two, run like you are running for escape. Run like like there is fire burning, and it's a matter of urgency. Forget about your friends. Forget about who is looking at you. Or who is not looking at you? This is the key to a glorious destiny. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. I don't care what you have done. I don't care what you have done. I don't care who is castigating you. Jesus is ready to give you a new beginning tonight. Everything I give to you Withholding nothing Don't sit back there When the Holy Ghost is asking you to come out God is still telling me that he's talking to people God is still speaking to people Many people inside Many people outside Forget about your friend This is a destiny decision I surrender all I surrender all to you everything those of you in front here begin to open up your heart to the Lord from the depths of your heart cry out your heart say Lord enough is enough with holding nothing Come on, sing it one more time. I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you. With holding nothing. We 
withholding nothing will you give your heart away that's what god is asking you to those of you in front will you give your life away so he can use you will you give your life away Will you give your life away so he can give me? Lord, I give myself away. Pray. Don't let your tears stop you. You may cry, but pray. So he. One more time, everyone. I give. I see some of you crying. I see some of you under heavy demonic oppressions. But let me tell you, this is the best decision you have made tonight. It's never too late to start. I don't care what you have done. Listen. Listen. Listen to me. I want you to know, those of you here, it is never too late with the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He won the victory. He gave you the victory on the cross. Jesus said it is finished. There are many things happening in your life. And the solution is not to go and try to solve it some other way. You must make up your mind and say from today. Hallelujah. You must be determined from your heart. That's how it starts. Hallelujah You have won the victory Come on worship with me Hallelujah You've won it all for me You have won it all for me just that part, one more time. Hallelujah. 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 You have won the victory. Your hands those of you in front i'm about to lead you to a very serious prayer you're not reciting a poem we are about to depopulate the kingdom of hell right now never forget this day for as long as you live some of you are rededicating your lives some of you are giving your heart to jesus for the first time i don't care what category Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I surrender my life to you. I repent of my old ways. I accept the free gift of eternal life. I receive it in my spirit. And I declare that Jesus is Lord of my life. From today, I go forward ever and backward never. Satan, stay away from my life. I've made my choice. Jesus is my Savior. I've made my choice. Jesus is my Lord. Father, preserve these ones in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let this not be an emotional decision. Let it be a sincere decision from the depths of your heart. 
and I break the power of sin over your life. The weight that doth easily beset you, I crush it right now in the name of Jesus. I release you. The righteousness of God is at work in your life. And for those of you who have come sick, I'd like you to relax and watch the mighty one step into your life. Hallelujah. Now, in one minute, you will come back. We're about to start the healing session right now. So please, just walk this way. Follow the ushers. They'll just have your details and you come back quickly and join us in the service. Celebrate them, everybody. Celebrate them, Koinonia. Young and old alike. Lift your hands, everybody, and say, visit me. Visit me. Visit me. Pray in one minute, everyone. Lift your hands and say, Lord, the time has come. I'm tired of this sickness. The time has come. I need a prophetic word that will take me to the next level of my life. Please pray. Pray and say, Lord, visit me. Visit me. Please, ushers, be fast with them. Be fast with them so that they can return back. Everyone begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Just begin to pray in one minute. Hallelujah. 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 There is nothing we can do without you. Jesus, reveal yourself in a mighty way. Let the sick be healed, O oh God. So many people are here trusting God for all kinds of miracles breakthroughs, marriages, jobs, healings and deliverances. Lord, we thank you for that which you will be doing. Be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Sorry about the congestion um, protocol and ushers. Please walk together to make everything fast. Hallelujah. Before we start the healing session, I just want to do something very quickly. It's Mike's birthday. Come here, Mike. Hallelujah. I told him I was going to give him a surprise. Hallelujah. Celebrate him. A lovely music director. Hallelujah. Mike, we love you. God bless you. Stretch your hands and prophesy. Ask the Lord to make him better than he is. Very faithful worker. Pray and bless him. We speak over your destiny in the name of Jesus. You will never be small. We speak over your life. You will do mighty things. Because of you, the worship team will step into a greater dimension. Hallelujah. I hear in my spirit greatness, greatness, greatness. The Lord is bringing you into prophetic seasons of greatness. This new season is a greatness, is a, is a level of greatness and prosperity. You will enter a level of financial prosperity that will surprise you and will surprise all around you. The Lord is determined to do it. Bless his hands, O oh God. May this be so in his life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please lift your hands. 
the power of God is strong in this place. Lord, we give you praise. Visit us, O God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Visit us by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let your healing virtue, let your grace, let everything that you have, let the dense weight of your person come upon us in mighty ways. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, my God, help me. Just play the keyboard for me. And then let's trust God for a great time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Strings, please. Exalted high above the worship of the people of the earth, I see the Lord. I see the Lord. For my eyes have seen the King. He's the Lamb upon the throne. Please everyone lift your hands inside and outside. Lift it as high as you can lift it. Lift your hands. Listen. Listen please. The spirit of God is in this place. Hallelujah. And the angels of the Lord, please don't stop playing are in this place this is a very very prophetic moment now the lord is going to be moving from inside and outside and he's going to be separating certain people this is not deliverance although that can happen this is a heavy impartation the weight of god is about to mantle people in very strong ways hallelujah please lift your hands Father, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus, all those who belong to this category, in the name that is above all names, lift your hands, my God. Lord, at the count of three, let there be a wild move of the Spirit. One, two, three, shekete, rekete, teketa, no comprende, skete. Lekete rebos outside. Bring them out. Bring them out. Touch an impartation of fire. Let there be a separation. Separate them, oh God. Separate them, oh God. Outside. The power of God is falling now. Outside. is hitting men right now. Like a tornado outside, outside. There are angels outside. The power of God is falling like a wildfire. A separation, a separation. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. It's a separation, a wild fire. Let it engulf them, oh God. Let it burn. Let the coal from the throne. Let the coal from the throne. Let it come upon visitors. Lord, those who are visiting in Koinonia, may they take the fire now. May the visitors take the fire now. Yeah, 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 yeah. There are angels outside. I tell you, there is a move of fire all across the first overflow. At the back, the overflow at the back, outside. The overflow at the back, outside. The fire of God is falling. The overflow at the back, outside. 
the fire of God is falling. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. Yeah. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. There's an army rising up, come on. There's an army rising up. Yeah. There's an army rising up. Shake it up, break it up. your hands. God is not done yet. I told you there will be a visitation. Listen, at the count of three, many people will enter visionary experiences right now. Visions, visions. One, two, three. Take it. Take it. Visions, visions. Take it. Take it. Visions. I open up prophetic realms. Take it. Take it. Visions, visions, visions. Step into realms of visions, prophecy, visions, prophecy. I ignite fire. Hallelujah. Visions, visions, visions. Look at me. Look at me. Take it now. In this row, an angel is walking in this row. This row now, now. This row. Take it. 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 Take it now. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising. They are rising up. To break every chain. Hallelujah. HOD, step into new levels of grace, two of you. Take it. Take it now. Goodness. The power of God is strong upon me. Hello. The hand of the Lord is upon me. The hand of the Lord is upon me. Let the Spirit of God move in power. Break change. If you are telling me, that 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 you are telling
are going to be fixed on this world. And as you have been blessed, we tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us. Because we have loads of videos, we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed, that is going to set you on course, that is going to set you on blitz. And don't forget, to there is a road that the power of God is moving outside. There is a road outside. It will start with a lady. There is a lady right now under the power of God, and it will follow to that road. Open the floodgates of heaven, O oh God. Hallelujah. All of you in this front row, just hold your hands. Just this row looking at me. Hold your hands. Lift it up. Father, let it come like a mighty wind. Take it now. 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 Soto prete kete teta. Repete kete tete ba. Som prete kete la ba 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 ba. Let it come like fire. Yeah. Someone, Sarah, Sarah, just leave them. Don't worry. Don't don't scatter what God is. Doing. Hallelujah. God is bringing deliverance to your family. Hold my hands. It ends now. Now, now, now. Be delivered. I cast that devil. I cast that devil by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We will have a visitation tonight. Lift your hands. I want to call spirits that are responsible for marital delay. Every spirit wife, every spirit husband, many of you will be surprised at what will happen to you. Some of you are already out. You came out for impartation. Lift your hands. At the count of three, the fire of the spirit will be separating men. Every devil causing delay in marriage. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. Lord, as they shout Jesus, I expose every devil and it leaves them forever. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Be free now. Now I call spirits. I call spirits. Marital delay. I call spirits. Every marital delay. I cause you. I open doors of marriages now. Doors of marriage be open. Every spell, every enchantment, every act of divination. Right now, I set you on fire. 
on fire, on fire, on fire, on fire, on fire now. I challenge altars, I challenge thrones, I challenge spells. We break every chain, we break every chain. We break every chain. We break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Let her go now. Go. Let her go now. Go. Be free. Lay your hands on your stomach. God is setting you free. The devil must let you go. There's someone in this room where I'm standing. The power of God will come upon you now. Somebody in this room, a strong anointing will come upon that person. Please speak that person right now. It's coming by the power of the Holy Spirit. There's one person. It's a deliverance fire. It will fall on you right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Pick the person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing someone holding like a child outside. Who is that person? The Lord is showing me in a vision. Please pick them inside. I'm seeing someone. It's like you're holding. Is it a child I'm seeing? Is there such person like that? Please. Who is that? Come, 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 come. Please. Save time. We have to minister to other people. There's this lady standing close to you. That lady. Yes, with white head tie. My dear, is that, lift your hands where you are. Visit her now, oh God. Now, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I cast that wicked spirit in the name of Jesus. Listen. Those of you here, just lift your hands. Lift your hands. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. There will be a wild move of the spirit because I see a lot of demonic oppressions. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Let the power of God move. Move right now. Move right now. Move right now. I cause every power. I cause every power. Bring them in. Let her go now to break every chain. Who brought her? What's wrong with her? At times like this, she does like this. This is demonic oppression. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Is she okay? She's not okay. Look at me. Hold my hands. Satan, let her go now. Look at what is happening. Are you seeing this? Look at the spirit tormenting her. Let her go. Let your legs be stretched now. Look at what is happening to the legs. Is the camera watching? Watch this. This is the power of God by itself. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her go now. 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 Watch this. Look at her deliverance. Out. Out of her now. Out. Out, out, kate paratapa. I return her back to sanity. Every madness out of her now. Excuse me. Every madness out, out. Never returns. I see an altar on fire. This is what I'm seeing. This is what is responsible. Let me tell you. Every altar speaking against everyone tonight. 
it will catch fire this night in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ thank you Jesus liver stand up stand up and follow me stand up by yourself and follow me stand up come follow me stand up walk Shake it, take it, ba 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 Come, come. Come on, can you sing? I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains. I hear the chains falling. Every madness of the devil has to find its way. There is power. Look at what look at what the devil has done to this lady huh? look at are you seeing for meeting look at the things that the devil has done bastardize this lady's life look at me what's your name Leslie. what's your name Leslie. what's your name Leslie. say Jesus. Jesus say I am fine she literally ate her mouth and injured it like that look at you can see where the skin was taken. Look at me. Follow me. Say, I am fine. I'm fine. Say, I am fine. I'm fine. It never returns to you again. Stretch your hands and say, it's over. This deliverance is over. If there is any other person with any sign of madness in this place or any kind of psychosomatism, be free now in the name of Jesus. Be free now in the name of Jesus. Look at me. The demons that torment you have left you and will never return to you again. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to pray for you. Please take her child. This is, I'm seeing witchcraft. The Lord is showing me witchcraft. People will rise in the family. When they get to a point, something hits them down. And that's the end of it. No matter what happens. This is what the Lord is showing me. But the Lord is going to bring deliverance. Please lift your hands. Because this is, I'm seeing a lot of witchcraft. My God and my King, let this thing end right now. Because this thing is not just with you alone. It's with your family members. My God, let it end now. Let it end now. Even to your husband. Let her go. In the name of Jesus Christ. Out of her. Out of her. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Madam, this is your child. Please hold, hold the child. Where is your husband? Eh? Where is he? He's in summer. What's he doing? We have to pray for him. You know why I asked? I'm seeing the spirit of death. Huh? I'm seeing a man holding, and please, if I'm lying, tell me I'm lying. I'm seeing a man holding like chalk. Huh? It's chalk, writing. As in his writing. Is he a teacher? A lecturer. Lecture. He's a lecturer. This is death coming on him. And we have to break it. Are you getting that now? Do you believe it? If you don't believe, I will just leave you before you now turn and say this person. The reason why we say this is because I understand that there are all kinds of perverted visions and revelations and corruption of the prophetic so everybody that seems to reveal something people just think that ah this person has done this and that are you getting my point now 
I must not, see, God must not show me what is happening to her husband for him to be delivered. I hope you know that. The word of God is potent enough to deliver the person. You understand? But God does these things as a sign and a wonder. Hallelujah. A family is about to be delivered right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. A family is about to be delivered right now. Be delivered now. I'm not speaking. Out! Now! I hear the chains falling. Two of you come. Are you related? Come, come, come. Two of you. Yes. What's your relationship? Eh? Is your boss. You are learning to sew in his place. Don't laugh. I don't mean love relationship. I mean what's your relationship? Huh? Because I saw the clothes I'm wearing on you. Suddenly. Are you getting my point now? God is just delivering people. Out! Let her go. Uh, ushers, you are still not exempted. Be doing your work and be sensitive. Anything can happen to you. Be doing your work and be very, very... Please, everybody be sensitive. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you. You will experience dramatic increase in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hold your hands together. There's witchcraft in your family. Wait. Yes, sir. True. There's everybody. It's not like every... This is death. This is delay marriage. Wait now. Calm down. God is going to set you free. Huh? Look at me. Just look at me. Look at me. Just look at me. Try to look at me. Do your best. Do your very best. He's unable to look at me just because it's an instruction. It's not like it's any herbal thing. God is setting you free. A habit is leaving you and a curse is leaving you. You look at me. Do your best. Lord, I attack witchcraft to its root. Out! Something's moving. Something's changing. See it Feels like heaven on earth. Something's moving. Something's changing. over your husband in the name of the Lord Jesus every spirit of death by the blood we command that you leave him in the name of Jesus none shall die in the name of Jesus Christ come sign up it's time for God to step into your family run and come see I don't need to call you just connect by faith God is already touching people and families. Are you getting my point now? Financial increase is coming to your family. Take it now. Financial increase. Mighty increase. Coming to your family. That's what the Lord is telling me. Mighty increase. I break the limitation. The same thing is happening to that lady. That's why this is happening. Every other person, oh God, that you are bringing financial increase. I know everybody will be touched. Listen, when God does one and you see other people reacting, it's because it's the same prophecy. So let's just maximize what God is doing. Lift your hands. Father, everyone who belongs to this category, at the count of three, may the anointing to make it happen be released. One, two, three. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now.
Take it now. Take it now. Financial bondage. Broken. Outside. Broken. This is a cause of hardship. In the name of Jesus, let her go. I release her and her family. Out! Out! That cause of hardship. Out! The Lord is bringing increase for your father. I'm seeing traditional things. These are herbal things I'm seeing in a shrine. The Lord is taking them away and bringing serious financial increase to your family lord confirm your word i've spoken as you have shown me let it be confirmed in the name of jesus this is your baby please give somebody hold the baby take away this garment of shame over your life in the name of Jesus this garment of shame go be set free be delivered in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah who is Eunice 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 Lord is ministering to me. A lady called Eunice. Who is that? Please, if it's your name or someone related, we have to save time. Eunice. Gabriel. 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 I'm seeing the last digits of a GSM number. 221. 221. That's the last digit of your phone number. 221. Who is that? You are the one? Do I know you? Okay, Gabriel. Okay. 221. Please, if that is yours, just come out. 221. The last digits. 221. Please verify. Don't come and tell us lies here. 221. That's what I'm seeing. It's like something covered the rest and I'm seeing 221. If that is yours, please come on. Gabriel, can I pray for you? Stand up, please, sir. What do you do? I'm an artist. Is that the only thing you do? Final department. Okay. I want to pray for you. Because what God is showing me, I'm not seeing you drawing. Huh? This is this is business I'm seeing. You look at me. Do you believe what I'm saying? I want to pray for you because things are tight for you right now. You're just looking, but things are not are really, really tight. Father, visit him. You called out Gabriel. Receive this visitation right now. In the name of Jesus. Your name is Gabriel too. Who is Adamu? Huh? It's a man in Kano. What? A man in Kano. Where do I know Adamu from? What's your relationship with Adamu? We work together. We work together. Is he a nice man? No. He's a wicked man. God is bringing justice to you. Hold my hands. Look at me. Have I met you? Do I know you? How do I know that there's a relationship between Gabriel and Adamu? 
Do you believe that God is setting you free? Father, like it was for Jacob and Laban, let there be justice. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, may there be mighty justice. Look, let me tell you, your life is about to change. It will shock you. Huh? But your relationship with God, did you, de did you rededicate your life here? Do your own now. You are supposed to come out. Why did you stay back? This is what is giving legal access. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Lift your hands. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I'm serious with my relationship with you. I make up my mind to stop playing games. From tonight, I'm a genuine child of God. Women, out of his life. Every spirit of immorality lost and every related thing i cost you be free my god will give you promotion that will honor you and lift him in jesus name why are you here why are they here what next eh? all of you are eunice is she married There is a garment of shame God is taking away from your life. Huh? You are a lady boy, it's like you are a man. Nobody is coming to you, nobody cares, nobody is even saying your hair is fine. We have to take this in away. Look at me, my dear. It's not normal, we have to curse it. Lord Jesus, help this lady. Now, I restore that glory in the name of Jesus Christ. I won't say it here, but be careful. Huh? You, you understand what I'm saying, right? Do you understand? Please be very careful. The devil comes to steal, kill, and what? Destroy. But God shows you mercy and grace. Huh? Lay your hands on your stomach. Thank you, Jesus. Let there be perfection. The Lord is not even talking about you, He's talking about your elder ones. I've seen them. It's because it's the same thing that is happening there. I've taught you people. Bring her out. Lord, let it be over now. Lay your hands on my hands. Just lay your hands on my hands. It ends. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, I appoint unto you a season of liberty. In the name of the Lord Jesus. To appoint point unto them that mourn in Zion to give them beauty for ashes what is happening to you is happening to her at the same time to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give them beauty for ashes it's the same thing that is happening to her Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is going to do something strange in this place right now. All of you from Kogi State, lift your hands. Just lift your hands. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Lift your hands. This is a very strange instruction. There will be massive deliverance right now. Follow me, instrumentalist, please. At the count of three, this is a territorial deliverance. Lift your hands, please. 
follow me instrumentalist one every altar catch fire now catch fire now catch fire now outside I command the blood the blood the blood the blood all the children that have been buried the blood Lord in Kogi state as you have shown me every Kogi person every altar against your life catch fire now catch fire now catch fire now bring them out bring them out deliverance every altar the children that have been buried I command the earth share ye the word of the Lord I come with an apostolic territorial mantle let there be deliverance massive deliverance now now I'm seeing snakes I'm seeing snakes all kinds of snakes all kinds of snakes this is what I'm seeing they catch fire now they catch fire now every serpent every devil I speak to shrines I speak to altars I speak to covens by the anointing of the spirit for the spirit of the Lord tonight is upon me I challenge you I command an exodus an exodus an exodus you will hear testimonies they will carry the dead bodies of men those who are found they will carry dead bodies of witches and wizards that will not let you go I command the vengeance of God let the dagger of judgment fall upon every shrine let the dagger of God's judgment I command it if I be an apostle of God I command it Hallelujah You have won the victory Come on, lift your hands and worship Hallelujah You have won it all for me You have won Everyone who is sick, lay your hands there right now. For time's sake, we may not have everyone come out, but lay your hands. Something miraculous will happen in this place right now. Wherever you are, lay your hands. Some you're laying your hands, but what is if it's in an area that you cannot lay your hands, just lay your hands on your chest. Hallelujah. Now listen. Listen. The moment I pray for you, the power of God is already healing people right now. Check yourself. The moment you find out that the miracle is happening to you, maybe not everybody, just run out and come and stand here. There will be an explosion of miracles. You must celebrate what God is doing. 
Aya Nente tatalaba Selekete le bambre tinamaya Who shall declare a thing and it shall come to pass When my God has not established Hallelujah Lay your hands now And while Jesus was teaching The power of God was present to heal The Bible says And when the evening was come They brought unto him all that were sick and crippled And oppressed Please take it serious This is a miracle service we don't fake it in this place a miracle is about to happen as i begin to command please check yourself start doing what you could not do this is the point where your faith is needed hallelujah in the name of jesus the son of the living god and by the mystery of the blood that pays the price for the ransom of anything in the spirit the blood is a receipt that can pay for anything in the spirit and lord i pray right now as i begin to declare i want you to shout a loud amen miracles are already happening in the name of jesus blind eyes be open now blind eyes every eye condition be healed now be healed now every kind of deafness complete or partial deafness be healed now be healed now god is touching people peptic ulcer be healed now be healed now peptic ulcer Peptic ulcer, you will feel like fire burning on your chest right now. That's ulcer being healed. God is healing ulcer. Ulcer, you will feel fire burning on your chest. Ulcer is being healed right now. I give you the praise. I give you the praise. I give you the praise. Lump in the breast. Lump in the breast. The right breast. Lump in the right breast is being healed now lump is being healed now i cost that spirit i cost that spirit by the prophetic word this lady is going to start coughing things out she's going to start coughing things out right now she will start coughing things out Hallelujah. hallelujah migraine headache every kind of migraine be healed now be healed now be healed now every respiratory condition someone is going to feel something jump out of your chest now every respiratory condition heart condition breathing problem i command the spirit leave now leave now those outside make sure you are connected leave now in the name of jesus there are so many ladies with so much pain even if you are not on your period your stomach i cause that pain together with all kinds of menstrual pain menstrual pain of all sorts go now go now go now menstrual pain is of the devil i don't care what medicine says go now 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 irregular period the lord is healing that now right now there's a lady you've been on your period for two months non-stop it dries up now now and there's a lady from november last year 
you don't need to come out from november last year you've only seen your period twice in the name of the lord jesus i restore order to your body now i restore order the power of god is moving to this effect i restore order now now hallelujah please begin to check yourself begin to check yourself a tooth problem has been healed i give you the praise lord a toothache tooth problem serious tooth problem the lord is healing it right now right now right now right now lord let every healing every healing hallelujah now I really want to conserve time I'm just thinking since Pastor Jake is here we can lay hands faster on the sick do I need to call the sick to come out is that a good idea answer now let's work together because I know there are people you are still not satisfied okay please and please if you've been healed just stay back especially for our guests who are coming here for the first time and then a few others if you check your body and you see that you are still sick and you need the touch of god please come out and line up healing thank you jesus rain Washington. Rain is falling down healing rain is falling down i'm not afraid Brought, who brought our daddy he came on his own he came on his own what's wrong sir difficult in walking, difficult in walking. your leg what happened sir your leg is weak i'm going to pray for you daddy and jesus will heal you right now hold my hand sir don't worry just sit down Thank you, Jesus. The power of God will start moving your leg. Lord, thank you for healing. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I curse that spirit. You see something happening to your leg? You're feeling something happening to your leg, right? Yes. The power of God is moving. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of the Christ of God. Daddy, look at me. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, stand up. Come, come, come. Help him, help him. This is stroke. This is stroke. In the name of Jesus, I curse it. I curse it. I curse it. Sir, at the count of three, lift up both of your hands. One, two, three. Just lift your hands. Lift your hands. That stroke hand, I curse it in the name of Jesus. Daddy, try walking. Come. Hold my hands. Follow me. Come. Come. Look at me. Look at me. Come. 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 Just turn. Turn. By yourself. Just do what I'm doing. Do what I'm doing. Come on now. Look at God giving a miracle. In the name of Jesus, are you seeing the power of God now? Oh, 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 oh he's able. Say, go ahead, Daddy. The devil is a liar. Say. Hey, boy. 
as God healed you, Daddy, God is going to restore to you every worm has eaten, everything the palmer worm has eaten, because the Lord is showing me that the enemy would have taken your life first week of October. They would have buried you first week of October. This is what the Lord is showing me. But in the name that is above all names, four years, four years now, for four years, this has been. The devil had wanted to destroy you. I'm seeing first week of October, they would have buried you. But in the name that is above all names, the Bible says the heaven of the heavens belong to the Lord. But the earth has he given. So all earth, I forbid you from taking this man's body. In the name of Jesus, he will live long. He will live strong. And for every one of you praying for him, may your family members live long. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Daddy, we are going to walk one more time. Look at, look at. He's so excited. To the shame of the devil. To the shame of the devil. To the shame of the devil. Come and walk again, Daddy. Walk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please take him to his seat. The Lord perfects him in the name of Jesus. Worship him. Help us. Let's save him. You are not the only one. All the people in your family that came, come and stand here. This is witchcraft. Come and stand here. This is not sickness. What a mighty God we serve. Please hurry up. Just save our time.
Hallelujah. Jesus will set the whole family free. Kai, this is witchcraft. Acute witchcraft. You know you need a miracle, right? Huh? You came here trusting God. Huh? What did the doctors tell you? My leg. Wait now. I need to pray for you. Huh? The leg issue is a simple issue. If I don't pray for you, they are going to diagnose you with cancer. Huh? Cancer of the breast. Cancer of the breast now. It's cancer. This is what I'm telling you. If we don't destroy it now, this is cancer of the breast. It's witchcraft. Huh? It's okay, don't cry. Please, please. We don't have handkerchief here. Handkerchief, oh, please. Madam, listen. The, I told you it's death. Where is, where is your husband? husband is dead. husband is dead. Where is your mother? My mother is dead. They've, uh, wait, I'm showing you that this is witchcraft. They want to kill everybody in your family. Huh? They want your son. Where is your son? My senior brother. Wait, who is paralyzed completely? If there is a God in heaven, hear me. If there is God in this place tonight, your deliverance comes. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Hold my hands. Jesus, change their story. Let the speaking blood speak right now. In the name of Jesus, I break the chains of witchcraft. Please help this woman with a handkerchief. Anybody, anybody. If there is a God, you will return back to this place to testify. I cause cancer now, 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 out of her body by the power of the Holy Ghost. Cancer dies now, together with the leg issue. Your leg will start moving now, supernaturally by itself. Your leg will start moving under the influence of the spirit and that evil thing upon your leg leaves you forever baby hold my hand Hallelujah. look at this innocent girl look at this girl where's the camera when you look at this girl you see a walking corpse do you understand I'm seeing a coffin in the spirit. They have finished this girl since last year. This girl you are seeing. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus said it. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am there. I am. Father, change this girl's story i bring you out of the valley of the shadow of death in the name of jesus christ out now out now out now in the name of jesus I change the story of this family now whatever legal access the devil has over your family we lift up the blood as the price for your ransom therefore we command your exodus now the same thing is happening to someone here exodus now everyone marked for death I command your exodus now everyone marked for death everyone marked for death I command your exodus now in the name of Jesus. Let's save time.
Thank you, Jesus. Free. She's in the hospital. Set her free. In the name of Jesus.
saying she must die who shall declare a thing and it shall come to pass when the Lord has not commanded it he said no witchcraft no enchantment against Jacob shall stand see don't let all this nonsense voice is when you don't know who you are I think we are going to sing that song chosen generation we need to shout it to the devil that we are not confused Wash it. Too. are you ready now give us that song sing anything even if you don't know the fashion just sing the one you know are you ready now Hey, 
if we don't finish here on time, you will sleep here. Oh. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the king. <laughs> Mommy, be healed. Every planting that is not of God, we uproot it now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Be free. Every growth in your body dissolves and passes out of this body. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. See, Baba Ladaba. Do you have your prayer request? Please start submitting it. Usher, start getting a prayer request. Prayer requests are very important. They are not a formality. If you've not written it, now is the time. Send a text to your loved one. And say, send it fast. There is a God that answers prayers. Thank you, Jesus. Be healed now. Savior, he can move a mountain. My God is mighty to say. Yes, he is mighty to say. Be healed now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Jesus is great in this place. Please write out your prayer requests. Don't spare anything. Hallelujah. Please, I want to pray. I want to lay hands on all the children. All the little children from age 1 to 10 just 1 to 10 if you are more than 10 keep them 1 to 10 please bring them out 1 to 10 mothers if you are tired give somebody to hold the child and come with it please just hurry up let's save time while we collect it please if you are not interested, you can sit back, please. Bring all the children. We must lay hands. Ah, that's a baby. Teach me how to hold though. Before I strangle the neck of this baby. <laughs> Come and hold the mic for me. Let me do serious business here. Baby has small nose like you. Hold on. Baby, we prayed for your arrival. Oh. Every barren woman in this place. Stand up. Everybody stand up. Ah! I use Wumi as a point of contact. I'm very serious now. Every family here trusting God for the fruit of the womb 
Rete le banda brandos ko para da balakas ke brekikata. God is breaking barrenness. The same God that brought this baby. The Bible says children are a heritage from the Lord. My God, I pray, I cause barrenness to its root now. In the name of Jesus. Baby, may you be strong. May you grow to be a beautiful and a godly girl. We separate you in advance from destiny killers. Wolves in sheep's clothing. May they never find you in the name of Jesus. All those who are determined to destroy the life of visionary people, they will never find this baby in the name of Jesus. I'm going to pray. Hallelujah. I'm going to lay hands on every one of this child. I want you to help me. If you know that you are a mother or a father, or you plan to be a mother or a father, even if you don't plan, just join us. Hallelujah. Many of you are, especially those of you who are trusting God for marriage this year. I hope you know the year is still young. Is this all the faith you brought for this meeting? Now is the time to believe God and stretch your hands and say, Lord, as you did it to them. I didn't say, come out, oh. Don't worry, immediately I finish. All those who are trusting God for marriage this year, if you think you are bold enough and you are not ashamed, immediately after this, march out and stand. Don't be ashamed of anybody. Don't let anybody look. I'm serious. Hold on. If you know you have a lot to do in your destiny, you are a hundred level, and you just come and march out here, please, we are not playing jamboree here. I know there are men of God that do we are acting based on instruction. Make sure your father and your mother will smile when you tell them you are ready to get married. Don't cause anything that will come and disgrace the name of the Lord. Praise God. All of you stretch your hands. It's amazing. Let me challenge men. I don't see any father standing here. And I if I remember very well, I know that Mary was the only woman who just gave birth like that without a man. Fathers, men, every gentleman say, say myself behave. Say it myself behave. When it comes to responsibility, many men leave the women. But if the baby takes first, you are the one who wants to go to the school. Lady, say I refuse. Stretch your hands. Let's pray for them. Every blessing you know you would give your child, release it to them. Pastor Jakes, please. Let's lay hands on them. Father, we lay hands on these children. Every spell, name of the Lord Jesus, everything that makes your brain dull, we command that you are not dull. In the name of Jesus Christ, bring her please in the name of Jesus Christ baby grow in the fear of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah now if you know honestly please don't play games with God here you know that you are trusting God to settle down maritally in this 2014. Come out and stand here. Please, we are not playing games. I am very, very serious about it. God is a miracle. God is a glorious God. He is a glorious God. God is I know you are a miracle. miracle. God is a glorious Sing it one more time. God is. 
you are ready to marry this year are you joking eh? you are standing in for somebody okay. hallelujah listen listen we are young people but it doesn't mean we are indisciplined are you getting my point now now look up i want to say something very important some of you standing here are the enemies of your own marriages hallelujah gideon said why have we not seen these manifestations he said destroy the altars any ungodly relationship that you are in that is stopping your life partner from coming we break it from the realm of the spirit now may that married man never call you again I know you have been getting money from him but the relationship is hereby declared non and void you must choose to walk in holiness and integrity hallelujah there are people standing here that there are powers and thrones please lift your hands and horns that attempt to lift themselves against your marriage you are a very pretty lady but nobody can look at you the moment a guy looks at you and is trying to talk to you something just happens and scatters it there are some of us you are guys you are you are a hard-working and disciplined person but the moment any lady comes to you today she says she's she's serious after one week there are some of you people come and they die some of you have even had introduction and the guy ran away but in the name that is above all names listen this is an apostolic ministry we are not ashamed the bible says i am not ashamed of the gospel every aspect of the gospel that brings freedom we will preach it and we will set people free lift your hands you will be very surprised I said it at the beginning of the year that God told me there will be surprise marriages even people who did not believe and expect listen let me give you a revelation my Bible says male and female he created them what and what did he say female and female did he say male and male that means ladies there is a male counterpart for you you believe that I'm going to pray for the man, not a man. Are you getting me? Not one man meandering around and you say, let me manage, time is going. No. You can read a course you don't like and manage for five years and leave. You cannot manage marriage. Lift your hands. Let's first destroy these altars of Baal. See that, Ababa. Get ready. Because the power of God is about to shatter spells into pieces father everyone here under the influence of any spirit husband or spirit wife or any enchantment in the name of the lord jesus at the count of three may deliverance come to you one two three right now right now right now i cause it i cause it let them go let them go now. I release you now. I release you now. 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 Every spirit sitting on your marital destiny, I set it on fire. Now. Hallelujah. Now I prophesy to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus father your people have come out because they are ready to settle down in the name of Jesus whatever attribute they need to have to become award-winning wives and husbands may it come upon them now in the name of Jesus wherever your husband is if he is walking in this earth right now just like Boaz Located root, gata paterekete, zeteleketabababa. I call forth your life partner now by prophecy. Now, 
goodness the power of god is creating a connection right now right now in the realm of the spirit right now in the name of jesus i connect you in the realm of the spirit i break every soul tie i break every soul tie i break every covenant stopping you from marriage right here we are going to hold your wedding card and announce it to the shame of the devil in the name of jesus some of you are ready to marry there's no money god punish the devil in the name of the lord jesus we call for supply the beds that brought food for elijah in the name that is above all names receive divine supply now Go and return with your testimony. Please rise up everybody. Pastor Jakes, please come. Pastor Jakes is going to lead us to pray and prophesy on this request. Listen friends, we have a God that answers prayers. There are just a few minutes and we'll be out of here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please just stretch forth your hands towards this place and communicate with God. Get, go ahead and pray. Father, we pray. Rabala baka shi para gale bondo si para bale brega lele le boko sa. Raka tada da raba si te bale bondo braga la la baria da raba kasa da raba liga de. Riha ta sa para bago dia de bale brega de de boko sa ni raba da. In the raka tada bato para raka de bale brega la la baria raba do baria. Raka to paya raka tali raba raba raba. Ende brega lele bondo braga do bale brega la la baraka da. Raka ta ya raba la la baria baria baria. Raka la baria baria raba raba da. Enda raka ta la ba raba ta la ba raba da. Raka ta ba ha sha para ba da. Raka ta li ba raba ba 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 ba. Enda reke le 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 ba kosi ba la ba da. Raba to sali etando ho. Imanda kato ja ila. Barus ali etando. Iga bo ja ila. Raunda as ila palierno. Resula Italia. Rusa indo ko. Iamba uada. Wabula ada yondelu. Riamula. Uacha kayuna ma, uatu ya 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 biala, ruma uba ura gana, Rusia la, makondo robo kosi kama. Father Lord, even as we lift up these prayers before you, we ask that the fire of God come. Let the fire come from your presence. Let it come upon these prayers, Lord. Let it rise like incense to you. We release angels of God, angels of God to visit homes, angels of God to visit people in hospitals, angels of finances be released, angels of breakthrough, angels of marriages, angels responsible for salvation, healings for loved ones. In the name of Jesus, we release contracts. We release contracts. We release contracts in the name of Jesus. We speak for it to building projects. Let it arise in the name of Jesus. We speak into dead academics. Let it rise. Dead spiritual lives. Let it rise. The grace of God comes upon families. In the blessed name of Jesus, we speak to barren cases, family challenges. In the name of Jesus, it ends. We speak to divorce cases. Aha. Lord, for those trusting you, for you to bring back their loved ones. Fathers, in the name of Jesus, we ask that fathers come back home. In the name of Jesus, we call for missing people. We ask that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the angels of God bring them back in the blessed name of Jesus. And Lord, we speak right now into the highway. Aha! Lord, for our loved ones traveling right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that the hand of God will be upon them. The Lord will shield them in the blessed name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory for every prayer point here, Lord. It receives answers in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We pray and the church of God says, Hallelujah! As God's servant has prayed, we convert this prayer request to testimonies. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ please everybody stand inside and outside please rise something must change in your life right now and Balak told Balaam he said go and curse the nation of Israel and Balaam told him he said I have been commanded to bless and this I have done he said I cannot reverse it hallelujah scripture said destroy it not for there is a blessing in it destroy it not for there is a blessing hallelujah the Bible says believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established he said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. I want you to believe that the word that is about to come forth right now can do something remarkable in your life. We've had testimonies indescribable. This is the moment where breakthrough comes. This is the moment where lots of miracles begin to happen. Please lift your hands. Hallelujah. He said, Weep not, thou that didst not bear. Break forth into singing, thou that did not have a child. He said, For many. Are the children of the desolate therefore in the name of jesus i come under the apostolic unction and i command receive breakthrough now breakthrough now breakthrough now i command breakthrough now in every area of your life breakthrough now receive breakthrough now every limit every limit I smash it in the name of Jesus whatever has not been working in your life right now in the name that is above all names I command it to start working now start working now every voice speaking against anyone here that every time you want to move forward there is a voice listen the bible says in six things shall he deliver you job five he said yes seven things he said in the time of famine you will laugh and you will shall be delivered from the scorching tongues of men in the name that is above all names i command every scorching tongue against your destiny be silenced now 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 To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give them beauty for ashes the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called the oaks of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified whatever has stopped your growth whether spiritually or academically the Bible says they that dwell in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God like the cedars of Lebanon will they be fat and flourishing I command barrenness to be over now I cause barrenness now I cause barrenness wreck 
And Jesus said, Every tree that has not been planted by my Father. Hallelujah. I shared with you last week on the mysteries of the kingdom that there is the mystery of sleep. Something happens in the earth when men sleep. The Bible says, While men slept, it's not backsliding while they slept an alien came and planted something and went away and people woke up with diseases they did not sleep with in the name of jesus every foreigner in your body and your life that my father has not planted come out of their bodies now come out of their bodies now by the fire of the Holy Ghost come out of their bodies now hallelujah and the Lord told Moses he says see I have made you a God unto Pharaoh see I have made you a God unto Pharaoh everything that has oppressed your life and has put you under bondage tonight you rise up above and beyond that challenge now in the name of jesus christ hallelujah and the sons of the prophet told elisha he said where we meet with you is too small come let us go beyond the Jordan and the Bible says while they were felling the tree at Jordan the axe head fell and they said alas master for it was borrowed and the prophet said where did it fall and he threw a stick and the axe head began to float I reverse tonight in the name that is above all names every situation over your life that you know only God can change it May that God change it now. Every situation in your life that only God can change, may that God change now. Change it now. Change it now. He said, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. And so said among the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. He said the Lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad turn again our captivity oh God as the rivers in the Negev I pray let it turn around blessing hit somebody right now let it turn around blessing hit somebody right now hallelujah because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness Therefore God, even thy God, has anointed you with an oil of gladness above your fellows. And the Bible says, Esther went in. And when the king saw her, he said, Esther, what would you have me do? Even up to half of my kingdom. Everywhere you need to enter for the next level of your life. Reporto Soto. We break protocols tonight and we command that God will take you there. May my God take you there. May my God take you there. Hallelujah. And the man who was crippled from birth, he needed a miracle, but there was no man to help him. And the Bible says some people lifted him and tore the zinc and put him. It's one thing for men to want to help you. But it's another thing for them to vow to help you all the way. I prophesy every destiny helper that is responsible for the next level of your life, career wise, marriage wise, academic wise, I call them into your life now. 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 Hallelujah. 
the Bible says thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me round about Genesis 24 verse 1 and Abraham was old and well stricken in age and the Lord had blessed him in all things how many things how many things every part of your life that is remaining to align with the all things anointing the Bible says Naaman second Kings 5 was the captain of the Syrian army he was a mighty man the Bible says but he was crippled I pray every other area of your life that needs the touch of God let that area of your life receive that divine touch now receive it now receive it now hallelujah the bible says is there hope for a tree although it be cut down he said at the scent of water at the scent of water everything in your life that has gone down that you're asking can god take me back to this level again some of you are asking can i go back to the level of anointing i used to function in again can god take me to that level of grace again my god and your god restores all things for you now the lord most high restores all things now May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding rest and abide with you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And now I pray for you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord lift up his face before you. May he lift up his countenance upon you. And may he give you peace. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Give God praise in the name of Jesus. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.